Today I've got a nice number puzzle type problem to show you. So what we'll do is determine the number of zeros at the end of 11 to the thousand minus one. So this is a very, very large number. You can calculate it pretty easy in Mathematica or something, but you definitely wouldn't want to calculate this number out by hand. And so we'll be calculating the number of zeros at the end of this by hand, and we're going to use a main tool of the binomial expansion formula. So let's recall what that is real quick. It says that we can write a plus b to the nth power as the sum as k goes from 0 to n of n choose k and then a to the k b to the n minus k. And so what's n choose k you might say? Well that's the binomial coefficient and it's defined as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to n minus k plus 1 over k factorial. Now the important thing here is that there are k total terms in the numerator. And there's another way of uh, writing this if n is a natural number, which it will be in our case, and that would be n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. But this is a somewhat more general way to write it where n does not have to be a natural number. Okay, so now that we're armed with this binomial expansion formula, let's look at our goal. So we'll take 11 to the thousand minus one, and I'll write it as 10 plus one to the thousand minus one. So clearly 11 is 10 plus one. We're really doing fancy stuff here. Great. And now we'll expand 10 plus 1 to the thousand as a binomial with this binomial expansion. So the role of A is being played by 10, the role of B is being played by 1, and the role of N is being played by 1000. So that's going to give us the sum as K goes from 0 up to 1000 of 1000 choose K and then 10 to the k times one to the thousand minus k, but one to any power is just one, so we don't need to worry about that. And then we're gonna subtract one from this. Great. But then we're gonna make an immediate simplification, and we'll do that by noticing that if we set k equal to zero here, we get 1,000 choose zero times 10 to the zero. But 1,000 choose zero is one, and 10 to the zero is also one, so that means the zeroth term here is equal to one. Well, we're subtracting one, so that in fact cancels. And so what we'll really have is just the sum as k goes from one to a thousand. Okay, so we've canceled the zeroth term, and now we're gonna take the first four terms out of the sum and then write the rest of the sum all bundled up into this summation notation. So our first term left over will be 1,000 choose one times 10 to the one. And then the next one will be 1,000 choose two times 10 squared. And then we'll have 1,000 choose three times 10 cubed. Finally, 1,000 choose four times 10 to the four. And then we'll have plus the sum as k goes from five up to 1,000 of 1,000 choose k times 10 to the k. Great. So I didn't do anything super fancy here. All I did was take this sum right here and spread it into these terms, keeping in mind that I canceled the first term out. Okay, so by our definition of a binomial coefficient, we know that 1,000 choose 1 is just equal to 1,000. So that means this right here will give us 1,000 times 10, or in other words, 10,000. Great. Now what about 1,000 choose 2? So 1,000 choose 2 will be 1,000 times 999 over 2 factorial. But over 2 factorial is just 2. Okay, but notice that this 2 will cancel this 1,000 down to a 500. But then when we combine this 500 with 10 squared, we'll see that we'll have some number that ends in four zeros. So maybe I'll just write that as this box 
times 10,000, that thing ending in four zeros, where we're just assuming that this box is some number that does not end in zeros. Okay, now we're gonna play the same game, just moving down the line. So 1,000 choose three will be 1,000 times 999 times 998 over three factorial, which is three times two times one. So we can make some cancellations. So three will cancel this 999 down to 333. Two will cancel this 1,000 down to 500. And notice we'll be left with a number that ends in two zeros. So putting this number that ends in two zeros together with 10 cubed, we'll see that we get a number that ends in five zeros. So here we have this is again, some number times one zero 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 zero. So now we're ending in five zeros instead of four zeros like we did here. Now let's look at what's going on for this 10 to the four. That's actually the last one we need to work with because notice that since k is bigger than or equal to five for every term in this sum, we see that every th term in this sum is something times a number ending in five zeros. Okay, so anyway, let's look at this thousand choose four times 10 to the four. So that's gonna give us 1,000 times 999 times 998 times 997 divided by four times three times two times one. So we can cancel. So this three is gonna cancel this 999 down to a 333. We can take this two and cancel this 998 down to something like 499, and then we can take this four and cancel this thousand down to 250. Now the important thing here is that what's left over ends in a single zero, but then when combined with this 10 to the four, we'll see that what's left over ends in five zeros. Okay, so let's maybe summarize what we have. Our number, which is 11 to the thousand minus one can be written as a sum of 10,000 and then a number that ends in four zeros and then numbers that end in five zeros. So that means in the end, we know that our final number has a bunch of leading digits and then it must end in, five, in four zeros, one, two, three, four. And then in fact, looking closely at these first two terms, we can find the digit before those zeros start. We don't need to look at any of these terms because those end in six zeros and because those end in five zeros instead of four zeros. So notice this guy right here starts with a one and then four zeros. Whereas after multiplying through, this five times nine will create a five in the correct spot. So this is going to end in a five. So the final format of this number is a bunch of unknown digits, a five, and then four zeros. But that gives us our answer. So how many zeros are at the end of this number? There are exactly four zeros. And that's a good place to stop. Thank you.